You're listening to Racing World, brought to you by Perspective Group. It's your motorsport podcast show in conjunction with Race Control Magazine. Well, welcome to another edition of Racing World. There's a heap of stuff again today on the show, but we've got some breaking news now that we've just heard. Nico Hockenberg completed 100 laps today at Barber Motorsport Park uh, for the Arrow McLaren SP team. Uh, very successful 100 laps. The photos that I've seen, a lot of smiling faces. So one can only wonder where that's going to lead to. Zach Brown's still saying that they're not going to go to the three cars until 2023. And I'll talk more with Bob about that a little later in the show. The other person that was at Barber today testing in an Ed Carpenter racing car, Ryan Hunter Ray. Uh, did a, a vast amount of laps, was very happy, commented about how it was a good first session. Uh, this, you would think, would be putting them in line for the daily car from this year, um, but you just don't know. But anyway, Ryan Hunter A, forming up with Ed Carpenter Racing, watch that space, and we'll see how that one and where that one may lead to. We see Pickens gets up the inside of Guildford. It'll happen as they'll move. Just cushion up. They'll lean against it, lean against it. Right, as you see, the white rear just bowled under on the seven of Buckley's car. Zero tyre wear. And that's the number two NC. He must have been asleep when the lights went out. Deskovitz holds on to it. Williams comes straight back at him. Travis Buckley just gets a big old bike down there in front of the Lucas Oil VIP corporate swing. And oh, oh, we've got one over that. That's Brett Morris. Morris. The most awaited speedway season ever. It's coming to Lucas Oil Western Spring Speedway. Onwards in the news now, and uh, I'm delighted to say that Perspective Group, which is the parent company that I own, uh, will be joining forces with Lucas Oil Western Spring Speedway for season 2021-2022, and will be providing all the coverage at the track and for broadcast and for live streams and for YouTube for them. Very delighted about this. Uh, been a great amount of effort done behind the scenes during the winter months. Uh, so the only thing that's standing in our way right now is COVID and uh Hopefully that will just disappear shortly and we can get on to it. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, John McCullum, the general manager for Bruce Robinson Speedways, uh, to which there are a group of speedways in the North Island here in New Zealand that that Bruce is responsible for, um, confirmed with me last week that the the deal was done. And we're looking forward to uh, bringing fans something maybe a little bit different at Spring Speedway, very iconic speedway in New Zealand, been around since 1929. Many great names in IndyCar have driven there. Mel Kenyon, AJ Foyt, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, the list goes on and on and on. So we're really delighted to be part of Western Springs in 2021-2022. news on the Kiwi Motorsport front too and a long time driver that I've been associated with Connor Adam uh, just recently announcing that he'll be part of the Super GT series here in New Zealand over the summer and aboard a Porsche and uh, they debuted the paint scheme on the Porsche this week and it looks mighty fine. Connor, Connor a great talent, part of the Elite Motorsport Academy a few years ago. Uh, got a lot of time for Connor, and uh, we wish him uh, all the very best in his endeavours in the Porsche. Got a great record so far for the limited amount of time he's driven a Porsche, almost 100% win record. Uh, so looking for big things out of Connor Adam this summer on the domestic motorsport scene in New Zealand. 
And then other news before we really get into the show this week, uh, just before the US Grand Prix, Fernando Alonso travelled to Miami, opened the very first Simply EV uh, Kimura store, uh, to which he's responsible for those brands. Simply EV will be marketing electric vehicles, mainly scooters and bits and pieces like that. And of course, his sunglass brand Kimura, which he's been associated now with uh, for quite some time. We were lucky enough to get footage of Fernando at this and having a bit of a go on a scooter as well. And he was uh, pretty delighted to be opening the store in Miami, certainly a target area for Formula One in the coming months and years with the US Grand Prix set to be hosted there from next year onwards. With, with Kimoa, this partnership that uh, we started uh, a few months ago and uh, you know today it becomes uh, reality and uh, I cannot think on a, on a better place, on a better city uh, here in Miami and uh, you know with a, with a bigger plan in the next uh, few months and a few years across North America. And then the last piece of news, of course, uh, the battle for the wild cards for Bathurst. And uh, we got the chance to catch up with Russell Lingle, certainly one of the, the veterans, uh, the enforcer and the kid, it's been called. Triple Eight entry in disguise, you might say. Uh, and he'll be teaming up with Brock Fernie for the Bathurst 1000 in December. This is quite a good combination. They recently tested again at Queensland Raceway and they've got some miles under their belt now. And of course, the other notable wild card of, is New Zealander Greg Murphy and Richie Stanaway in an Erebus entry. So, the battle for the wild cards, battle probably for the guys that were the heroes several years ago and are still going to draw big numbers at Bathurst, but we have the chance to catch up with Russell. Yeah, well, this is our third of our wild card tests, and uh, this is more of a logistics day. So, yeah, we'll do a little bit of uh, testing, and I'll get some more laps in, which at the end of the day, that's the most important for me to keep going around and around the circles and get used to getting back in the saddle again, uh, but also doing pit stop practice as well because got to remember with this team we've got a little bit of a combination of everyone there's a bit off of Brock Super 2 team a couple of newbies all the rest of it so as much as you want the drivers to get practice the mechanics need practice and uh, doing changes and refueling and everything that goes with it too because that's an important part of Bathurst is to make sure your crew is slick uh, know what they're doing and uh, uh, yeah so overall um, we, uh, we'll just go through the motions and uh, hopefully we'll uh, come out the other end of all this with a very fast, slick crew. Having these three test days and the build up to Bathurst, uh, I mean, it's been so valuable to myself. To be quite honest, if we didn't have these test days, I wouldn't have done it because you can't get yourself back in the rhythm, get yourself match fit um, if you don't have these sort of test days. And uh, I know there will be a couple other wild cards in there that will have no testing going into it that's a big ask you know I'm I'm probably now third day getting comfortable with the car knowing where everything is uh, knowing the feel of the car and it's taken that long to get there so I definitely wouldn't want to roll straight into Bathurst without having this testing so we've been very fortunate and uh, and made use of these days as well to uh, to get me back up to speed and of course Brock Brock doesn't need to get up to speed because he's already fast <laughs> Well, joining me now, Bob, um, quite strong words there from Russell Lingle, eh? The wild card entry, always there, the enforcer, uh, always one to be reckoned with. I, I certainly had a lot to do with him in my days at TVNZ. Uh, won't rule him out of this one, but I think the battle between him and our Murph is going to be interesting. It's a bit like um, two old heavyweights going together before a, a fight. Uh, put it this way, my money's on Murph and Stanaway. And um, wait and see what happens later on. Yeah, exactly. I, I think, well, come the if return. It happen. If it happened. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, well, come the return. I was going to say, the, the return of V8 Supercars, first of all, we've got to get through Sydney Motorsport Park and then get to Bathurst. So, uh, yeah, time will tell. But uh, it's it's good to see that rivalry. It's competitive and healthy rivalry, and that's what it's all about. But, uh, yeah. yeah, go the Kiwis. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, right. uh, while we're just staying on that subject of trans-Tasman, uh, we'll call it relationships, uh, there's a Scotsman involved as well who's buying up racetracks like No Tomorrow at the moment. Tony Quinn, known to both of us, we've had a lot to do with him, purchasing uh, Queensland Raceway effectively over the weekend, very close to the deal at Taupo now as well, which will give him three tracks in New Zealand. Uh, these, yeah. are, these are big moves from TQ, aren't they? They are. I mean, I don't know what the end game is. Um, and probably nobody does apart from TQ. Um, the Queensland Raceway one has taken a while because that was on, off and all sorts of things. So I don't know what's happened there to sweeten the deal. Maybe he's offered more money, as he seems to have done to uh, Topol 
um, Motorsport Park um, or the um, Bruce McLaren Motorsport Park. I forget yeah. what they call it. Anyway, Cow Park. Cow Park. Um, so I don't know what, as I say, I don't know what the end game is, but I, and everybody likes to jump on Tony Quinn's back and say, oh, it's not good for this, not good for that. But you've only got to look at um, Highlands Park and in New Zealand anyway, Highlands Park and Hampton Downs to see the improvements he's made to Hampton Downs and also the whole damn thing at um, Highlands Park. And he has race meetings there and he does all the bits and pieces that, um, that are necessary. So um, no monopoly is a good thing, don't get me wrong. I don't like people having monopolies on anything because as we've seen with our supermarket chains, the prices go up and the standards <laughs> go down. But the, um, yeah, good on him for doing it. I mean, yeah. somebody's put money in motorsport and there's not many people doing it apart from him and the guilt traps in New Zealand, as I could see. I think Australia's a, a different case. But yeah, good, good for Tony. Yeah, and, and uh, Matt McCutcheon, who's in this year's New Zealand Motorsport Elite Academy class, uh, taking out the Tony Quinn Foundation um, scholarship uh, for the 2886 series just the other day as well. So, you know, yeah. TK's putting, he's putting plenty back in there, that's for sure. And, you know, yeah, you look at yeah. a place like Hampton Downs now and nothing against Chris Watson or Tony Roberts whatsoever. Yeah. But it wouldn't be there without them, don't forget. It would yes. not be there without them. Yeah. So, so yeah, 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 good news. It keeps the headlines going. And uh, staying with the headlines, we'll just do this one before we get to the US Grand Prix. Actually, actually, just before you go on to that, you also got to say a big um, congratulations to Josie Spillane as well, because Tony's yes. been yes. Tony Quinn's been in Australia for a long time because of our <laughs> rules <laughs> getting back into the country. Um, but Josie has, um, the way she manages everything, she's hard, man, she's hard. But she knows <laughs> I know. Doing, and she, she is, um, she has managed that business over here incredibly well. And out, out underneath all that hardness, she's bloody good at her job and she's a really good fun person to be with. So Josie's belaying, uh, good on her as well. Sorry, interrupted you. I you totally agree on, on that one. Uh, it's like motorsport. It's a team game, and, and Tony's got some good people around him, and she's certainly one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Okay, to our uh, heading towards the US Grand Prix, we'll just try and clean up some of the much talked about Andretti thing. I did some research into it in the weekend. Uh, clearly, uh, all the sources that I've come across say that Michael has 350 million euro that he can afford to invest in a Formula One team. Heck knows where that's come from, but anyway, he's got it. Uh, there was no talks with Alpha that we're aware of over the weekend, uh, and he said he wasn't available for any press matters over the weekend. Then the subject of Colton Herter kept coming up. There's an argument about whether or not he has enough super license points, and there is an interpretation of that. Uh, under the FIA rules, from what I've read and believe, he does. He has 40 because he set them before COVID, and super license points haven't been applied during COVID. So there's a gray area there, shall we say. Yeah. So Hertha could end up alongside Valtteri Bottas. The thing that tips me off with it all is the fact that Bottas came out the other day and saying, someone like Hertha belongs in Formula One. Hmm. I don't see why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not being, I'm not being derogatory to anybody that wants to get into Formula One or any racing driver whatsoever, but just swapping from IndyCar to Formula One, <clears throat> it's not the work of a moment. It really isn't. And there is no, I don't think Herta would shine <clears throat> in Formula One without a lot of testing, yep. which you can't do unless you use old cars. Uh, there's new cars coming along next year as well. Maybe that's good or bad for him if he ever got there. I, I, I think it's all bullshit and, and um, yep. talk about stuff at the moment. It's not going to happen next year unless he gets a Friday drive or two, which he would, would desperately need. Um, and going back to what Andretti said, that he can afford 350. As soon as the word afford comes into a Formula One, <laughs> tomorrow, ain't going to do it because you cannot say, I can afford this. If it goes to 370, can you afford it? Oh, no, I can't. Look at Haas, look at oh, well, other teams that have been through. Afford, don't even put that word in there because if you're thinking about affording, it's not that sort of game you're dealing with bigger boys then. And, you know, I'm once again, not being derogatory to anything in IndyCar. Just because Michael Andretti is a big force in IndyCar, he's dealing with Ganassi, he's dealing with Penske, he's dealing with that sort of, those type of teams. He's not dealing with the Red Bulls, Honda, Mercedes, 
all that sort of stuff. Yeah. We're developing stuff way faster. So just be a bit careful here, buy into the team, but don't think you're going to run it like a beautiful team straight away, in my opinion. I, th I think the journey's got a, a fair way to go. And, and it was very interesting too, a, a comment that I read. Uh, our, our good mate, Bernie Ecclestone, chipped back into the equation. And it's not often that we hear from Bernie these days. And he pretty much echoed the same thing as you. It's one thing to uh, own a, a very successful IndyCar franchise. It's another thing to be part of a Formula mm -hmm. One program. So, you know, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, story, the story's got a long way to go. Yeah, Colton Herter and... Look, anybody from, from IndyCar, it's not that easy as a transition. What was the last American really to come into Formula One? Was yeah. Michael Andretti. Okay, there's all sorts of rumours. Believe me, I was involved in quite a lot of the Michael Andretti stuff when I was at McLaren. And, um, yeah, it's the, the transition was not that easy before that. The, the most successful was his father, I guess, yeah. Mario. So, yeah. you know, there's not many that have tried it. Talking about Formula One and IndyCar again there, it's interesting that this week, I think, is um, Nico Hulkenberg is having um, yet another ex-Formula One driver um, is uh, having a, a ride in a McLaren, yep. Yep. IndyCar with the McLaren team. Um, I don't know if that's a look to the future because they're thinking about running three cars, I understand. So maybe a look to the future of them running three cars or not. I don't know uh, whether Hulkenberg will transition well no idea but if if the likes of um Lundqvist, well, you know Rosenquist rather and um Grosjean. Um, yeah the foot and Grosjean can do it then maybe so because uh you know Nico uh, was never a slouch even down here when he was driving at Taupo with the A1 GP team um he was no, never any slouch as a driver so I think he would transition quite well yeah, well, Zach Brown's made no denial of the fact that they want to expand to three cars, but they want to do it when they're ready. So there's kind of a bit of a scapegoat scenario on that as well. The other thing that came out the other day, staying with the IndyCar theme just briefly, was the fact that Honda said that there is a limit to how many engines they can supply. So, And Chevy mm -hmm. can't be expected to pick up all the slack as well. So while we've got more teams wanting to be involved, at the end of the day, there's only so many engine deals, and it'll, it'll, that'll be what decides it. Yeah, yeah, I can't see McLaren going to Honda anytime soon anyway. No, no. Um, after this, after, maybe after that will see them in time, I don't know. We'll yeah, see. maybe you, you might see Nico, but again, no one's mentioned ovals at the stage. Maybe that becomes an option for, you know, the 106 running of the Indy 500. Who knows? I think there's a lot of scepticism, but it's great. It's, it's great that there's that interest. I think that that's really good. And, um, you know, the, the Americans certainly did a good job of supporting the US Grand Prix over the weekend. Uh, they did. Um, oh, I've got quite a lot to say about this, so I'll choose. Um, I, I won't go on about too much anyway. It was a great event. That's the first thing, as an event. A yes. great event. Wonderful. Um, and the crowd there seemed to eclipse, completely eclipse, any motorsport event in America, which is encouraging. I mean, you know, getting 400,000 people there over three days, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, it, it does uh, by the Indy 500, of course. Yeah, well, you also got to consider, you've got to consider there that Cota really hasn't always pulled massive numbers. And yes, they were on a renewal deal and everything, but that was a good crowd. But also with the Mexican Grand Prix coming up, usually, you know, you get lots of Mexicans there and splitting the, splitting the vote, so to speak. Yeah. That was, there's a lot of Mexicans there, I know. But you can't even say that. That was an American audience, basically, that, that was there, which is fantastic. One thing that annoyed me, well, two things. I'll get on to the annoying yeah. things first Ooh. of all. Um, well, and I'll start at the beginning. That bloody grid walk. It's fantastic to see Martin Brundle um, yeah. doing the grid walk again because I do enjoy it. I do enjoy the chaos of it and him trying to dodge around and people trying to find people and say, over here, Martin, uh, all that sort of stuff. But those prats of bloody Hollywood <laughs> I was going to call them something else then. Honestly, what do they think they are, for God's sakes? You know, they're, they're there, they're invited, free passes for everybody, free passes for giant um, bodyguards, and then they walk strut up and down the, uh, and not only the girl I'm talking about, but other people, strut up and down the bloody grid, and they look as if they own the world, but they won't say anything to anybody. What the hell do you think you're there for, you yeah. stupid people? If you don't understand Formula 1, bugger off and don't even come. I well, mean... I I think that applies they, to a lot of sporting events. Yeah, but well, they think that, and it is true, but it's the Hollywood thing. They think they're such big stars. Do you remember, you, you might not, but in the days when it, I was in the paddock, they're George Harrison, Catherine Zeta-Jones, 
Michael Douglas, all sorts of stars walking around and they'd stop and they'd chat and it's no problem at all. And they were accepted as, yep, there, oh, what a star, let's have a word with it. Suddenly, well, all I, this thing about, keep away I, from me, I'm precious. Oh, Jesus. It's I certainly remember being with you uh, in, in Melbourne on several occasions where, you know, we were um, close to Naomi Campbell. And, uh, and it was just kind of like a normal person in many ways, wasn't it? So, oh, yeah. Well, she was Flav's boy, her girlfriend then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and we like were after something for that team. Yeah. So, yeah. The other thing is this wonderful thing that Lewis Hamilton has said and lots of other people have said about Formula One has finally been accepted into the USA. Well, it's more bollocks. Do they not <laughs> remember the days of Watkins Glen? And Long, Long Beach, Beach. And Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. Well, we had thousands and thousands of people watching yeah. Formula One there Next. as an audience. Yeah. So now they're saying they've been accepted into Formula One as if it's a whole new thing because Liberty's got it. No, it's not at all. It's, Formula One was always accepted into the USA. One race at Cota, and with Miami coming up, does not make a sudden acceptance. When it was accepted 30 years ago, no problem. If yes. anybody ever went to Watkins Glen to see a race, there you'd see a crowd. If anybody went to Long Beach to see a Formula One race, there you'd see a crowd. So cut out the old acceptance of Formula One to the USA. It ain't new. You haven't reinvented the wheel there, boys. I think, I think that, you know, with the crowd at Cota, you've got to also consider the fact that the US, like every country around the world, has been deprived of sporting action, and this was a chance to them for them to get it. So the majority of the people there may not even have been diehard Formula One fans, but they had the chance to go and do something. And uh, I think that impacts on it a bit. But if you look at Long Beach as an example for IndyCar, you know, the West Coast for, for IndyCar is not always the strongest market, but Long Beach had a great crowd considering the COVID restrictions in California. So, you know, fair's fair. I'd be interested to see what it's like when we go to Cota again next year and see what the crowd's yeah. like then. But it was good. It was fantastic. What about that race, eh? There seemed to be an awful lot of passion in the crowd. I mean, they were yes. yelling for the oh, yeah. main drivers, but other people. And I, I think that it's all good. And the show that they put on was wonderful. Yeah. And that's Qualifying was fantastic, where you could hear the crowd actually roaring for Lewis and then for Max and yeah, that sort of yeah. thing. It gave it some atmosphere, which, you know, all these events have been missing for so long, regardless of what sporting code it is. You know, you know from when I was in Japan for the Olympics, how hollow that was without a crowd. But it, it was good to see that. And it was good to see the crowd being quite passionate about it. Drivers thrive off that sort of stuff as well. They've all said that. Elio said that at Indy, you know, just having some crowd back there this year gave them that extra. And that's that's kind of what it's about. And, they, you know, the, the race delivered. That opening lake was just sensational. Yeah, it was good. It was a good race. It was a great event and a great race. It really was. Um, the, the, the mere fact that the two protagonists at the front were some 40-odd seconds <laughs> ahead of the guy in third position you know still there's there's this great disparity and the guy in third position was driving the car that won the race effectively the same sort of car yeah you know? yeah so and then there were 10 seconds back and 10 seconds back you know but nonetheless the the race between lewis hamilton and and max verstappen was a great it was a good race there's a little thing that actually on friday the mercedes were really very very quick um and I was thinking, well, that's amazing. And then I heard the stuff that Christian Horner was saying. They found something at the back of the car to do with the diffuser. And I, I was thinking, right, okay, Mercedes have really got this thing sorted for the weekend. And then they, then they were slow. Um, and I had a little theory about it. And I'm, I'm really annoyed that I didn't mention it to anybody apart from who is I bend around here. Saturday and Sunday, they were slow again. Whatever diffuser they had, or the issue at the back of the car they had was ruined by the bumps of Cota because they managed to lower the car. The problem is when you lower the car, it hits the ground more. And if they lower the car, helping their, or helping to reduce drag, that was good. But when you're bashing the ground all the time, they had to change floors um, after Friday evening. And suddenly those floors that they were using, new, the new ones, weren't bashing the ground anymore. So they couldn't use that that uh, lower incidence yeah. on the car and they couldn't that's probably where the speed went but i was really annoyed that only the people around here heard me blathering on about that because i was reading that there's some other people's opinions um after the race on monday that that was it the track was affecting the way the team had managed somehow yeah. managed to lower the the car for the drug reduction so that lifted again and they were slower 
Mm. We've certainly got a, a true fight on now for the championship, that's for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is a fight. And I, I mean, what's going to happen in Mexico in a couple of weeks? No idea. No idea what's going to happen in all the rest of the races. No. I don't think anybody has at the moment. I mean, Red Bull kind of out tacticked um, Mercedes in many ways on, on that, uh, that event. Bottas was, he didn't help at all, effectively. No. No. <laughs> you know, not at all in, in, the, in the battle. But the, the disparity between Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton and the rest of the grid is a, an ever widening gap almost. They're just, um, they're head and shoulders above everybody else in those cars at this moment. Yeah. And, and good on them for doing it. If you go further down the grid, I think McLaren, I'm going to always mention McLaren, um, I think they've lost the advantage over Ferrari or, or perhaps Ferrari have gained the advantage over McLaren. And maybe that is an indication of the continual talk about the Mercedes engine issues that are, you know, causing Bottas to continually be penalised. And I don't think that these from Mercedes engines are finished yet. Uh, so maybe McLaren are becoming a bit of a, um, um, a, a victim of that yeah. thing that's going on. But it seems that in the McLaren team, it's in, it seems that Danny Ricciardo has actually found a bit of synergy between him and the car. So hopefully that will help them go on because they're precious, they need precious, preciously close to losing the, um, the, the battle for the Constructors' Championship, if you like, uh, yeah. between them and, um, and Ferrari. What uh, a good race from Leclerc, though, and, and Ferrari. They and really signs. got yeah. the weekend. Superb. Um, there was a thing that Sainz said on, on Friday after FP1 and FP2, uh, the fact that they were continuing to develop the car. And I know it was something that we talked about a few weeks ago about when you freeze your development, bearing in mind that it's all new cars for you know next season. But clearly Ferrari are very conscious of the fact that third place in the Constructors' Championship versus fourth place is a lot of dosh. It's a lot of kudos, and yeah. they're hungry for it. So development hasn't frozen as such. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think this goes, some indication of that is what Carlos Sainz was saying. When you drive for Ferrari, you don't only drive for Ferrari, you drive for Italy. Correct. And, I, I, and that is, um, that's a, <laughs> it's a major impetus there, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, you, there's all this talk about budget cap and all the rest of it. I just wonder how they can ever, ever, figure out the budget cap when Ferrari want to spend another $10 million. Perhaps it's Fiat that are spending it on a car <laughs> over there somewhere and they just happen to translate. I don't know how that's all going to work. But it, but it seems that we do have a battle there as well. And there's other battles all the way down the grid. I, I mean, oh, I yeah. thought, as I said, Leclerc drove really well. I thought Sainz did um, in, in many ways. Tsunoda, he came up the, um, he came up the, uh, the standings a little bit. He was wasn't too bad at all. Um, Norris had a fairly average race in, in his terms. Um, the, the the George Russell, well, George Russell seemed to be, I mean, Lost. all these guys have won behind from ninth place down to the back. There's at least one lap behind and two places. Yeah. But a uh, few laps behind when you get to the last couple of places. Um, yeah, Alpine. I, you, know, you know, Alpine, well, what happened? Rear wing issue. And a suspension issue. That was Alonso rear wing yeah. and, and um, Gasly with the, uh, sorry, Ocon, Ocon. with the uh, um, suspension issue. So, yeah, um, there are still issues, obviously, but I don't think that track was doing anybody any favours with the bumps there. But, mm. you know, as Martin Brunt and everybody else said on TV, you don't deal with it. Simple as that. Yeah, you know, exactly. you can't always do a race on a billiard table, and thank goodness that they don't always race on no. billiard tables. So. Uh, it, it's a great facility. It's certainly a very demanding facility, uh, and yeah. that climb up to turn one, you know, gives it the uniqueness as a, a track, just like so many other tracks around the world have. Uh, again, I I'm impressed by the fact that they were able to pull a crowd, uh, and they did that very well. They put on a good show. You had the W Series there as well, you know, so there was good supporting events. Um, I think the, the, the crowd, from what you could see through television coverage, were appreciative of that. You know, it's all, all a good sign. Uh, Coda have got to be going, thank goodness, because, you know, there's threats for other venues within the States. Um, and, you know, we head to Mexico now. The pressure kind of swings somewhat within Red Bull towards, you know, Perez. But uh, he's there to do a job, and he's doing that job quite well right now. And... Valtteri kind of needs to ride rear gunner a little bit more for Lewis right now, I think. He, yeah, he's got to. That's the only way he can do it. I mean, Perez, 
if you look at what Perez apparently had to go through, that he was sick in the morning and his drinks bottle didn't work and all that sort of stuff, masterful race from him mm. to, to actually do that. And um, if he can keep that momentum in Mexico, he's going to be he the hero of Mexico forevermore. Personally, out of all those things that happened, I'd like to see those people, those visitors to Formula One over the weekend actually sit in a Formula One car. And I'd love to see Shaquille O'Neal sit in a Formula One car. We have a two-seater plus another two-seater and a two-seater wide to get the guy in it. I love that bit. I'd like everybody else in the world did the bit with those photographs of Shaquille O'Neal and um, Christian Horner and the boss of Honda, who were just about up to his belt level. And then on the, uh, and then on the podium, being the same height as Verstappen and, and, uh, and uh, Hamilton. The other layer. It's just, just wonderful. That's the sort of person you want to be there because he was happy to talk to anybody and everything. So um, yeah, that's the sort of person we do need to be there. But he was, yeah, all in all, it was um, a thoroughly enjoyable race. Made more enjoyable, from my point of view, the fact that I could get up in the morning and watch it live on TV instead of uh, having to worry about getting up at two o'clock in the morning or one o'clock and staggering through it or watching it Monday morning. So I was thinking of you, I was going to give you a phone call and I thought if I do that, I'm going to be told to piss off. So I decided that I probably wouldn't give you the phone call. <laughs> no, 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 well, I was there. And the next race as well in Mexico is going to be a similar, um, similar time of day. So that's, uh, that's pretty good indeed. Before we have to go this week, uh, another thing that's on the radar now of world championship status, and that's the return of the WRC to New Zealand. This is uh, quite, quite a significant feat that Peter Johnson and his team have pulled off. I know I was personally involved with them in the last bid, uh, helping them out with some promotional material and video content for you know the the series organizer. But you know they've done it. Um, I I think. God, you've got to hope that by the time we get to that point in, in the year next year, that this COVID thing is but a more distant memory. Um, yeah. Very significant. And, yeah, and, and Peter Johnson, every time he talked to PJ about it, and every time he's interviewed, he says it's the team. The team did it. Yeah. Now, Peter Johnson, without his um, enthusiasm, without his financial help as well, I've got to say, and without everything that he does for rallying in this country, um, it wouldn't be here. I mean, it really wouldn't be here. This, of course, there's a team that does it. No person can do it on his own. But without that one person, PJ, I just unbelievable work he puts into it. And this is deserved. It really is. And after right. the disappointment of the last time and all that sort of stuff, I just hope it works. And with the inclusion, probably, of Jack's Ridge in there and all that sort of stuff. And, um, and I'm even more pleased that it, some of it usually gets run not very far north of me here. The end of my road, in fact. So, um, yeah, uh, great, great, great thing from PJ and his team. And congratulations to him. Really well, Jack's Ridge will certainly bring rallying to the people as opposed to the other way around. And, that, and that's, you know, looks very good uh, in the eyes of the series promoter and that sort of thing. So, you know, there's Indeed. a lot of scope there. Unfortunately, <laughs> so domestically, um, the Speedworks series are on hold a little bit because of the COVID restrictions. Yeah, yeah, it seems so. The Toyota 86 series is um, gaining more people, more and more people. It's going to be a fantastic group for it, if and when it happens. At the moment, the test days are being put back, put back, put back. So the first race in November, um, well, well, is now December, sorry. Yeah. Um, and the first race has been put back to the last event. Nice. So the first race should be in December. Hopefully, that will be good. But who knows at this stage? Who really? Who knows? Yeah, very um, hard time to be a promoter. Very, very yeah. hard time to be a promoter at any level on any sporting code. Or I, I agree. You know, I do sense a bit of a revolution coming in people's willingness to um, to remain locked down when uh, everybody's been so good with double jabs and all the rest of it. But but that I don't get into that. I'll get really in trouble. Another thing I want to mention, and good on uh, um, Jeff Short as well for, as being as the promoter and the um, the series coordinator of 86, the, the amount of people that he's got running those cars, driving those cars for the competition this year, fantastic. Him and Amanda and, and Nico Kayol and all those sorts of people, they're really, you know, they're doing it as tough as any other motorsport thing. Exactly. But, but one good news on uh, Kiwi Motorsport as well, one really good news, is uh, West Surrey Racing, um, led by uh, Kiwi yes. Dick Bennett, obviously, as we know, and uh, Mike Ewan, uh, Kiwi Mike Ewan as well as director of the company. They became the um, the BTC champions over the weekend for the fifteenth time. 
with the Constructors Championships with BMW. I mean, it's an amazing record, but anybody that um, who knows Dick and Kiwi, Mike Ewan, will understand why and how that um, that feat was achieved or has been achieved over the years. So congratulations to Dick Bennett and to, um, to West Surrey Racing. Wonderful achievement. Yeah, well, it just again shows you, you know, that there's Kiwis particularly scattered all over the, the world and uh, they're all punching above their weight. You know, we, we've seen what Liam Lawson was capable of, uh, you know, recently and uh, a lot of viewer feedback to this show about uh, the incident and the DTM uh, and, and all very valid as well. And we appreciate those comments from viewers because it kind of makes, it, it makes both of us dig a little bit deeper to find out more about these stories. And uh, so thank you to everyone who has made comments on that show. Um, and, you know, Liam did a great job, as does everyone that's competing overseas, without a doubt. Yeah, well, the next thing to look forward to with Liam is more Formula 2, obviously. Yeah. But then there's um, the run in the Formula 1 car, Yeah. whenever that happens. Uh, so, yeah, excellent. It's going to be the end of the season, I presume. Um, <clears throat> so, wonderful. Well, let's look at the future with optimism, because I'm sure... DT one of these days will actually be doing this face to face <laughs> instead of face to face through um, the the wonders of MacBook Pro. Or yeah, well, it's, it seemed like quite a good idea when I went to Japan. Let's do these on Zoom, except it's been going on, and that was way back in June and July. So I think it's about time to be face to face, and uh, one of us owes one of us a coffee as well. So um, you know that's got to come good. But yeah, another great week in motorsport. US Grand Prix, without a doubt, great. I think the thing that we'll watch with interest will be the Andretti Alpha thing. I don't believe that there's any other teams that Michael's talking to. Haas is not in the equation. Williams certainly isn't. Will it transpire or anything? I think we've pretty much covered that as maybe not, but maybe. So just stand stand by on that one. Um, yeah, you would uh, you would think the logical place for Andretti to go with it, with what he can afford is to link up with Haas. But yeah. obviously Haas has linked up pretty heavily with the Mazepin Russian family at the moment, so maybe that avenue is not there, and that's why he's decided to to look at um, the next team on the grid that's for sale. Yeah, which is which is Saba. So I, I think we, we look forward and in interest to that. Uh, more developments uh, by the time we do the show next week, we'll know about Nico Hockenberg's test, uh, which will have taken place uh, with the McLaren Arrow SP team. So that will be good. We know Ray Hulls now as an IndyCar team is lock solid for next year. Jack Harvey in there, Christian Lingard in there, and of course, Graham Ray Hull. So Christian, and Christian Lingard, that was another good, good thing, isn't it? After that one fantastic race, um, I know he's going back to Formula 2. He's going to finish off his Formula 2 season, but he was a bit of a star in there. It was good to yeah. see him going. So we're seeing a, a continuation of the changing of the guard. Um, I, I think they're all good things, and I'm sure that you know we'll have plenty more to talk about. So, as always, Bob, I, I thank you for your time. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm keeping you. One of the things we might be talking about in um, in maybe a year or so to come is, do you know there's an American joining IndyCar? <laughs> there's so many Europeans and whatever in there. There's an American joining India. No, it's being facetious. Anyway, thank you, DT. Yes, well, I'd, I'd like you to be bold enough to say that when we're both at the Indy 500 and say that there's an American there because I'm yeah, sure okay. we'll get a reaction, as you well know. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you once again. Great show again. Great to always have your comments on everything. Um, I think we've solved all the world issues in motorsport yet again for another week. Uh, plenty more to come. Once again, to people who have tuned in, uh, thank you very much for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing. Me and Bob both appreciate it. We'll have more for you again on Racing World next week.